the comedians and no i'm not referring to the dude's size i'm referring to his popularity and lately his bankroll too man you have been you've been on a roll all over the world i get around <laughs> yes you do well thanks to the hard work that gabriel's put in he's gone from packing comedy clubs which is tough to do in its own right to packing big sports arenas and uh, on july 25th he's going to start packing theaters all over the nation because the fluffy movie is coming and it opens nationwide in several screens here in seattle on july 25th that's a week from friday gabriel iglesias welcome to seattle in 95.7 kjr thank you so much you guys have an amazing view right here mm-hmm. it's nice huh it's not pretty. too bad the cruise ships you got to kind of crane your neck but we got cruise ships over there a little bit of the puget sound seriously though i mean talking about all the green too i live in california i'm not used to seeing trees <laughs> yeah it's green we got we've got uh, you guys have water <laughs> we've got water we've got trees wildlife seagulls <laughs> eagles fly around once in a while We've this got is very, a, very nice. Yeah, speaking of green, you know, I don't think you, you care, but weed's legal now in Seattle. I don't know how that helps. Uh, nothing never stopped you guys before. Yeah, that's true. Sure. It never did. Right. <laughs> never did. Now the threat of incarceration is removed. Yeah. So you're looking good. Have you have you lost some weight? Down a hundred pounds. I was gonna say, was, man, you look a, a lot down, down hundred pounds. It's it's pretty. It's a nice feeling. I don't need the mirror anymore. You know, I, I'm with <laughs> you. I'm with you. I've lost some myself. You know exactly what I, I, I meant. Exactly yeah. what you meant. We're right there because <laughs> if you look you. if you look at pictures of me, I was eighty pounds more myself a few months ago. So congratulations. Yeah, we've been working hard at it. I uh, just, it's just not it? eating as much. But I mean, this okay. this month in general, it's just it's been rough. It's been a rough month just because of the promoting. So it's like trying to maintain a certain schedule of right. eating is really tough. Well, you've got a, it's it's a fine line for you too because you don't want to get too small. I mean, you're fluffy. That's I mean, when you, I'll, I'll always be fluffy. But I mean, you got to figure. I was four forty five. I'm down a hundred pounds. So I'm like right around the three thirty mark right now. If I lose another hundred pounds, I'll still be overweight. So, <laughs> so, so you got, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, you got job security. <laughs> there's a there's a you're, oh. you, you you can still drop a little bit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I right. just, just want to lose the diabetes. That's the thing. Is that I go. probably need to lose another 50 pounds so that I can uh, have the uh, type 2 under control. That is exactly and what... That's the only reason why I'm trying hey, to lose. I'm right there you. with you, dude. That's what put the fear into me. My doctor said, you come back here and you're going on, on the on the drugs. Yeah, and insulin, metformin, yep. all that good stuff. Yep, and, you, and I wanted to get rid of that. So congratulations. Thank and, you. And congratulations on this movie. I, you know, it's... I know your fame is a result of, number one, you're funnier in hell, and number two, the web. I mean, YouTube has put your stuff all over the world. Absolutely. If not for social media and YouTube, man, my, my career would not be where it's at right now. It's, it's one of those that you go, it takes you directly to the people. You know, you cut Hollywood out of the equation right. and you just take it straight to the peeps. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking because that's the real 21st century way to get famous and people, you know, from... From Norway to Saudi Arabia to everywhere, love you because of what they've seen. But now you're letting Hollywood right back in. This is a real retro thing you're doing, you, you a know, concert you, movie. <laughs> Very much so. And I love the fact that uh, actually I got approached by Hollywood for this. It wasn't me saying, hey, what do you think? Let's go for this. Right. They saw the uh, the social media numbers and the YouTube numbers and just the overall uh, you know situation. And, and, and it sounds very viable for them. So And thank you, know. you for making it a stand-up comedy film. You're not like a massage therapist who falls in love <laughs> or you're working at a laundry mat yada, you're fluffy you're working laundry it's a natural that, that's i hate when they take a comic and, and put try him to a, make yeah and something that's just not his wheelhouse and this is just what you do best it's it's what i do yeah and hey. so uh you know not a lot of people have had this opportunity to take it to the film you know uh, right, i mean you got to go back to richard pryor eddie murphy that's uh, what we were saying yesterday Martin right? Lawrence, that's exactly, Kings of comedy yep. uh, and recently kevin hart and one thing I heard about yours, and I haven't had the opportunity to see it yet, but I can't wait to see it when it opens next Friday in theaters everywhere, is I saw the Richard Pryor one, and I was really young when it came out, and it was really, really dirty. I raw. mean, really dirty. It was raw. It was, you know, it was a lot of swearing and everything. I understand yours is PG-13. I could take my 15-year-old daughter oh, absolutely. to see Fluffy. Absolutely. I, and I did that on purpose. You know, it's like one of those things where no one has ever done it. They always feel like, oh, it has to be this way or it has to be that right. way. Even the film company said, we got to put the word, words raw and unedited in there. And I'm like, but it's not raw. <laughs> it's family friendly. It's, you know, the only F word in the movie is Fluffy. So you don't got to worry about, you know, am I gonna, are my kids going to hear things they're not supposed to hear? It's all about family. The whole special is about family and, and relationships awesome. and stuff like that. So it's, uh, it's good to go. Now, now don't get me wrong. Because it's not rated R, it's not like Frozen or anything. You know, you're not going to walk out of there singing about snowmen. <laughs> right. But, but there is a little edge to it. It's not a Disney deal. No, 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 no. Now, you want to eat a snow cone? Yeah, right. I'll eat a snow cone. I'll, I'll, a snow like a cone. I'll tear one up right now. <laughs> yeah, man, 
Marshmallow really good. On what top. do you miss as far as food goes? Because Spike and I have been doing the same thing. We're on pr- fairly restrictive stuff. Is there anything you I, go, I am restricted, I really but miss. you know what? I, I I miss it, and I think that's why I still visit it from time to time. <laughs> uh, bread. Oh, yeah. I'm bread you, bread yeah. is the biggest yep. thing for me. Yep. I mean, I've eaten steak, f- crab, salmon, but I, I would kill for a sandwich. I would, know, put, just I would put anything between toast. two pieces of bread right now and eat it. I don't care what it is. Put a piece of bread between two pieces of bread. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Ooh, bread sandwich. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, yeah PB&J, just yep. a regular peanut butter and jelly. Oh, I yeah. to my daughter yesterday, I'm just drooling over this thing. Oh, man. A mayonnaise so, so sandwich. Bread is, I'll take a oh, mayonnaise, mayonnaise sandwich. sandwich. <laughs> oh, I'll take one of those All right, right this now. interview is getting sad, <laughs> then. and also a little scary. <laughs> Food porn. Oh, I yeah. guarantee you, there's people listening right now going, man, I miss yeah. some bread. I want to eat some bread. Bread is the biggest one. And when you don't eat bread, you smell it everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere you, that's bread right mm-hmm. there. That'd yeah. be a great perfume for women, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, bread. I, yeah. yeah bread. Sourdough. Oh, you're making me oh, hot right lobby. now. I'm telling you. Yeah. Wear it and lose a limb. Yeah. Bread. 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 Well, congratulations, because I know it is a battle, and it's got to make the travel easier. You do so much overseas travel, and it's it's tough when a you're a big guy. A lot of time is travel. spent, uh, yeah, at the airports, uh, on planes. Yep. I mean, I've been in 10 states in the last two weeks. No kidding. Yeah. Any place scare you? No, 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 no. I mean, it's funny because we, we Wait, talked to Comic Detroit. Detroit that, scares see? me. Scary. Mm-hmm. Detroit scares me a little bit. We go water in Detroit. They're out of water. Yeah, they're, they're cutting off water because people are months and months and months behind on their water bill. And that, it happens. The average income in Detroit is 600 bucks a month, mm-hmm. given that people can't. There's just no work. So they're cut off water. And the UN comes in and says, that's a humanitarian. You can't do that. You can't deny people water. Water, yeah. I don't travel nearly as much as you do, but the Detroit airport is the single scariest airport I was ever in. I didn't think it was the airport. I thought it was like downtown because there's garbage overflowing out of right. the cans. Lady comes out of the out of the ladies' bathroom and says, Sir, would you mind going into the men's room and getting me some toilet paper? There is none in the whole ladies' room. I mean, wow. that's the Detroit airport. Now, that was a few years ago. How they much money did you make today? About 25 bucks selling <laughs> paper? I yeah. should. Yeah. I'm not Two a very squares, good a piece. Gonna have a trench coat. Yeah. I'm not a very good capitalist. Yeah, He's bare Square, you got five bucks. <laughs> We're talking to Gabriel Kirkland. Iglesias, got fluffy Kirkland right here. You get more, yeah. you get Kirkland. His uh, his movie's coming out next Friday, and I'm glad you're in Seattle to to promote it. Uh, you were in Planes, weren't you? Yeah, I was in the first one, Disney's Planes. Uh, I didn't get a call back for the second okay, one. Okay, I was gonna say because they got a movie. Would you but be competing okay. against yourself at all? Because they got Planes Two coming out or something yeah. next, this weekend. Yeah, Search no, and no. Rescue or something. I didn't, yeah. I didn't get the call. It's it's okay. Yeah, well, you got plenty going, and uh, you've been working hard for so long. I know, I mean, you started out from scratch just as a stand-up comic. Do you remember the first joke you told that got you such a big laugh? You said, you know, I think I could I could do this for, a, you know, for real. Well, I was 10 years old the first time I got up on stage. Um, I'd seen Eddie Murphy Raw. Mm-hmm. And as a 10-year-old, to see Eddie Murphy Raw, first of all, that's <laughs> incredible babysitting skills Seriously. by my mom. <laughs> Seriously. She went to go to work, and she left me with a VHS tape that said Raw on it. Okay, go for it. So... Uh, I saw that, and then I got to do a school talent show, and I went up there just doing impressions and characters, but I did tell a joke. The actual joke I said was, uh, why did the chicken cross the road? And then I said, uh, to check out the chicks. And <laughs> at 10 years old, that was like, you know, that, that was that's cute. That's a good one. Yeah, that's that was cute. cute. I got a big laugh, and I'm good like, one. okay. Uh-huh. That was where the, I got that first bug. And then, uh, you know, years went by, and I didn't get, a, get to get up on stage again until April of 97. Wow. Mm-hmm. And, and then you've just been you've worked. I've been nonstop since. Nonstop, <laughs> especially the last two months. <laughs> yeah, and, and how many countries you played in now? Like a couple dozen, right? Uh, I think we're right around twenty six now. Man, and uh, the, the I'm, I never thought I'd travel internationally to have a passport that's that's thick because they had to restuff new, it. New paper, new papers, yeah. yeah. Cool. You always say you know the wherever you're at is the greatest because in your so you're in your you're you're going to say America is the greatest comedy crowds of all time. Probably. Well, here's here's the thing is that I think it's ignorant for people to say that America is the greatest country in the world if they don't know if they've never been around. Right. You know, it's easy to say, oh, it's the best. Oh, I live in the best house in the world. Oh, mm-hmm. I, I have to drive the best car. Have you driven other cars? Have you seen other things? I have agree. You, do you have something to compare that to? Mm-hmm. And I have traveled. And uh, you know what? There, <laughs> there's some places that actually got it going on a little bit better than we do. However, this is home for me. And so in my personal opinion, America is the greatest country in the world. Right. Now, you know, we, <laughs> I know our BS very well, and I'm very comfortable with that. Now, as far as, as, as comedy audiences go, other than Americans, who who is who is really great audience? I mean, Norwe- they're all great. The Norwegians, ones, really, they're Norwegians in Norway. They lose their freaking minds. I am Elvis in Norway. Well, that's I can sell at an arena over there. I did it one night. It was uh, it was myself, and then the following night was Chris Brown, and we were staying at the same hotel, and it was funny because I ran into Chris Brown's mom in the lobby. 
You know, and uh-huh. I knew it was her because she had a shirt on that said, I'm Chris Brown's mama. <laughs> <laughs> don't charge me for anything. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, probably, too, it's because I don't think anybody in Northern Europe is funny. I mean, I don't think they have any. They I, have comedy the, is very new over there. Yeah. Uh, YouTube has definitely opened up the, you know, it's it's like the 80s over there really? as far as comedy is concerned. It's very new. It's fresh. It's exciting. It's like, wow. Same thing in Australia. Oh, there's not much comedy. Now, that, that they, they, they love me. they love comedy over there. They love comedy, but over there they're they're much more onto dirty comedy. Their sense of humor over there is so jaded and so just like you know, yeah. it's it's like ooh, they love it. They love it when you when you say certain things, and I'm like, wow, okay. Well, people have been excited that you're coming to Seattle. In fact, we do a thing called a backstage pass where we let listeners come in, and these young ladies came in just to meet you. They don't care about about any of us, but they are the, they are they are, they want to start the fluffy fluffy the Seattle part of the fluffy fan club. If you don't have one already, we bought cake pops. Cake pops, sweet. I recognize the bag, Starbucks. Yeah, he knows. You can smell them. I drink a lot of. I've been at Starbucks. I've been living at Starbucks for the last two months. Really? <laughs> oh yeah. Before you uh, came in, we were mentioning they they opened a Starbucks in Columbia to do battle with Juan Valdez. No the, the kidding. Juan Valdez. Yeah, they're going. They're going to go head to head with Juan Valdez in Columbia. Howard Schultz. It's like selling ice to Eskimos. He thinks he can, he can sell he coffee he to can Colombians. Do it. I don't know, man. Uh, there's been certain times when Starbucks did not work. Uh, uh, for example, in Miami, there's a part of town called Eighth uh, Street, Calle Ocho. Uh, it's uh, like Little Havana. Okay. And they have little coffee shops all over the place, but they serve Cuban coffee. Sure. And in that whole area, you will not find one Starbucks. It's swill to them. Yeah. No, I mean, it's they, nothing. It's yeah. water. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. No, Cuban coffee. That's that, that's yeah. some strong, that's some strong, tasty stuff. Mm-hmm. You ever been to Cuba? I came close. Came I came close? close to going to Cuba. The uh, raft sink on the way out? <laughs> 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 <It> was, <laughs> I got well, to see the shore from here. <laughs> It was a uh, it was a USO tour oh, okay. that, that uh, didn't make that stop there. Right on, because you can go. People here go up to Vancouver, fly on in. Yeah, you, they do. You can do that, or you can go to Mexico, and then you know yeah. you don't get that right. you don't Pop get over. that stamp. Right. Mm-hmm. I know you got a. You have a son. Yes, I do. How Se- old is your son? He's going to be seventeen very soon. Oh, right on. Oh, God help you. He must yeah. be. You must be. He must be proud of dad. You know what? Uh, he really is. He, I have a great kid, and it t- technically he's my stepson. And I mean, that's one of the things I talk about in the film. But uh, he, I had him at the screening the other night. He was excited. He had his friends. You know, he's like, yeah, "Can my friends come to the screening? Yeah, they can come. You know, half the movie's about you. Mm-hmm. They might as well. <laughs> it's all you're getting out of this. Kids, no are check. The, kids are the best source of material, aren't they? Uh, they are. They are. But I mean, like for my son, I, I like the fact that his friends are such huge fans of mine. To where, if I have any issues with my kid, I can always go to his friends and go, "Hey, help me out, you guys," because you know they got his. Does he have any problem with being a part of your act? Because I, mean, I have a daughter now who's 25, but when she was 17, 16, 15, I would tell a lot of her stories yeah. on the air. And she would get grief. She'd go to school and say, so I heard you snuck out of the house last night. Your dad woke up for work and your window was open and you weren't at home. <laughs> and she comes in, you got to stop telling stories about me. I said, well, I'll make you a deal. You stop doing stupid crap, and I'll Thank find you. something else to talk about. <laughs> Thank you. That's exactly what I told him. Because like last time, I says, uh, "You got to start wearing deodorant. You don't smell cute anymore. You, you're funky. <laughs> you need to fix this problem. Yeah, something you might like to meet somebody and yeah. yeah. You know, he's like, I don't have a girlfriend. Well, because you have flies <laughs> surrounding <laughs> you. You got the st- stink going on. Mm-hmm. And, and so I started talking about him, and, and he would get a little butt hurt in the beginning, and yeah. then uh, I says, "Listen, Frankie, I says." Here's what you got to look at. You got to look at the big picture, okay? I'm going to be dead one day, and all of this is going to be yours, okay? I says, you're not going to have any any difficult times in life. I says, you will have your struggles, but ultimately, you know, you're never going to wind up in the street because I've go. already made a nice nest egg for you. I'm telling you know, these jokes happen. so you don't have to. You know, I'm out there working <laughs> hard. Basically, yeah. I, says, I says, you know what? I says, if, you, if you're not happy with it, I won't do it. But uh, honestly, I says, you're, you're living an amazing life, and right. it's because of this. So this just look cost. at it like that. Right. You know, it's funny. My daughter's in Europe right now. She's singing in the state choir, and she was in Paris on Bastille Day. Oh, and, nice. And, yeah, and I called her. It's, you know, 3 in the morning here. It's noon there or whatever. And uh-huh. I said, oh, you should call us. And, you know, Paris and Bastille Day's got to be excited. Oh, no, I don't have time for that. I feel like saying, look, honey, do you know how we got the money to send to you send to Europe <laughs> on this, you know, on this <laughs> You better do live. this live yeah, remote. Yeah, I think, I think you, you owe me. You better do this live remote. You owe me five minutes from Paris. <laughs> you know, she's in Zurich, Switzerland this morning, and I, it's sad news, but Johnny Winter just passed away in Zurich. I should yeah. probably say, look. Go down to the hotel. Go look at Johnny Winter's <laughs> body. Yeah. Take a picture for daddy. Me, you go tell me. Daddy's Facebook 
pay needs the hits. What's Upload it to the website so we can send our <laughs> listeners there to see what's going on there. Live from Johnny Winter's gravesite. Yeah. Well, Gabriel, it's so nice of you to take the time to come in. I know you're you're on a whirlwind tour. This is going to be a huge movie, Fluffy. It opens next Friday, July 25th, all over the country. You're going to really quick to our uh, uh, Seattle fans over here. Do you guys have any questions? Because they got a microphone. Turn that mic over. Yeah, rolling up. You don't have one. Mom doesn't get one. We we know. We know where the bread's buttered. Hold on, hold on, hold on, baby. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get you up. We'll we'll guide you in. We'll get you home. All right. Think of anything. You guys could ask me anything. 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 Um, Believe me, I get very personal. I drink. (laughs) (laughs) What do you like to drink? I'll start with that. Tequila, Patron Silver Chill. Right on. Well done. See, that's been part of my, uh, I've missed that. With my weight loss, no drinking, and I'm I'm looking forward to getting back. Oh, believe me, I still managed to sneak in a few shots here and there. There you go. I think I'm going to do his 3010. Yeah, yeah, his, his program. <laughs> Fluffy needs to come out with I was going to tell you how I did mine, but I think you got it under control yeah, here. So long as I've got tequila, I'm good. Um, how often do you get back to El Paso? Um, I, I'm from there, so I guess that's part of the reason we're so connected. Um, and do you really eat that much chocolate cake? You can't be losing 100 pounds on no chocolate no, cake. No, that's a great question. First of all, uh, the chocolate cake thing, for those of you listening and wondering what she's talking about, is in 1998, I did a joke where I said I love chocolate cake. It was uh, basically me on the phone with my girlfriend, and it was kind of like a, uh, like a, it sounded very sexual. You know, mm-hmm. like, oh, I love chocolate cake. I did it one time. And to this date, I still receive chocolate cake. And to put it into perspective, imagine, okay, this is how much cake I get. Imagine it's been your birthday. Every single day since 1998. Every gig you every showed single, up. Every <laughs> gig, I get anywhere from 6 to 15 cakes. Mm, man. Every single show. So you got to figure, every week, it's like right around 30, 40 cakes. No, I no longer eat the cakes. Uh, I might mess with it a little bit, maybe get a fork or cut a corner off. Um, you take yeah. a, a bite, a gratitude bite. A, a gratitude sure, bite, sure but I mean, there's it. so many. I mean, at this point, I'm just fingering the cakes, you know? <laughs> well, that, that doesn't sound right. Can I say yeah, that? No, again? it sounds great. It's ah, it's fine. You it okay, you can yeah. finger cakes. Um, <laughs> as far as getting back to El Paso, once a year. The next time we're going will be the Don Haskins Center, probably the beginning of uh, 2015. Uh, I have a show coming up in Socorro. Uh, is, that, is that Texas or New Mexico? I know it's right next door because it's Texas. a border town. Texas. Texas, yeah, that's coming up uh, next expert month. over here. Yeah, you got it. We got to get you on stage up here too. I know oh, you're yeah. doing. I've done the I've done the more many yeah. many times. Yeah, and then, uh, Emerald Queen. EQ, you bet. Yeah. Well, stop by any time, and man, you've inspired me. I got to write a killer strawberry cheesecake joke. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd like to see those things start coming in. Yeah, and that was one of those things too, where I said that, and and uh, people say, "Well, you should have asked for cash back in the day." Uh. And my friend goes, "Dude, you should have said you like hookers." I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else already does that. Joke. How about it's hookers yeah. holding money on cake? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> see, ask for it all. Oh, Hooker man. cake. <laughs> Gabriel, thank you so much for coming. Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias in the studio, 95.7 KJR. Rich Robinson from the Black Crows is going to play for us live next hour. We have quite a show, and I know you have quite a movie. I can't wait to see it. Thank you. Next Friday, look for Fluffy in theaters everywhere.